Thank you for joining our webinar today, where Scott Oswald will be sharing details with us about Century Print and its intuitive, elegant user experience for office printing. Scott is the technical product manager for Blueprint Enterprise, as well as OEM embedded devices. You've seen his face and heard his voice before on previous events we've hosted. So welcome, Scott, and thank you for educating all of us again today. While Scott is presenting, if any questions come to mind, please type them into the questions area on your GoToWebinar panel. If we don't address your question live today, we will respond in email um, with a link when we share the link to the recording for this event. So I don't wanna keep everyone waiting any longer. So Scott, I'm going to turn my webcam off for bandwidth purposes and hand the mic over to you to take it away. All right, thank you, Lindsay. So good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, depending on your time zone. Um, today, we're going to learn a little bit about Sentry Print. Um, it's a product that we've had actually for a little while. Um, people um, that have used our Beacon product or been exposed to it have seen it. Um, it was our uh, uh, initial development for what we call the common client or the common platform experience. Um, and it was designed to work with Beacon, Blueprint and Uniprint um, in a, uh, uh, a tiered fashion. So we started with Beacon first, hardened the, 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 the product offering in that platform, and then we've moved it to Blueprint uh, starting about um, a year and a half ago now with Blueprint 5.3. And uh, it'll be coming soon to Uniprint in um, midwinter of 2021. So without further ado, Um, we're going to start off with a polling question. Okay, and I, I launched it already so everyone can begin answering. So our first polling question is, what's your biggest beef with Vero secured printers? Deploying is cumbersome but bulky. The UI is not intuitive. The UI is hard to distinguish from other screens. I don't currently secure my printers or I love everything. So we'll give everybody a couple more seconds to get their response in. We do have another poll later during this event as well. So we definitely love everyone to stay interactive and give us your input. Okay, I'm going to close the poll. and. Scott, do you want me to share the results or? Um, I can I can do that. I can do that. So um, uh, from our polling experience, 34% of you uh, say that deploying is both cumbersome and bulky, um, which is the highest of them, followed by I love everything, which is awesome to hear. I like to hear those words. Um, the user interface is not intuitive is third, followed by I don't secure, which is a 12%, and then 5% say the user interface is hard to distinguish from the other device screens. So what we learned um, within um, informal uh, conversation with, with customers is that the number one concern that, that they typically have with Ferros IMFP is that the screens are different by make or model. They're not really intuitive. It requires too much end user training. Um, they're ugly, which made me cry just a little bit. No, it didn't really so much. And then, um, although it's not really a user thing, it is an administrative and a deployment function, um, that deployment is time consuming and very manual and required a lot of training too. So your responses today pretty much fall right into um, what we've seen historically uh, when we've uh, polled other customers and, and, and had those kind of events. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, uh, it's true. So what do we do? Well, at Ferris, we innovate. Um, one of the things that we like to do is um, constantly improve on customer experience because that is what makes everybody successful. Um, so we started with, in, with Sentry Print. Um, Sentry, of course, is a noun, which means a guard, as well as a verb, which means to control access to a place or thing. So in our concept, we're using Sentry as controlling access to a place or thing. It is um, 
locking the device down. It's requiring authentication, whether it's by a card swipe or by a keyboard login using email and password or mail and password. Um, and coming soon, uh, we can even use uh, Bluetooth identity management on your phone uh, to log into the system as well. Um, Sentry Print by itself is actually an umbrella name that accom accommodates a bunch of different applications. Um, those are the Sentry SR25, which is an appliance-based print release terminal um, that's useful in both uh, or in all of Beacon, Blueprint, and Uniprint. Uh, Sentry SE50, which is the embedded print release software. And then the Sentry Print app, which is an iOS and Android print submission, job management, and release tool. And some of you have had experience with those as well in the field. Um, today, we're going to focus primarily on SE50. And what is it? Well, um, I like to call it IMFP 2.0. It's a logical progression for all of our product line. Um, it features a modern and consistent look and feel across all workflows and manufacturers, um, as well as a consistent look and feel between Pharos products. Um, we use Sentry SE50 to, to authenticate and track print, copy, and scan by user. And it is currently available for Beacon and Blueprint today and coming soon for Uniprint. Um, it's an integrated full function software solution and we can easily deploy it either via the Beacon console or through Blueprint's Print Center. Um, additionally, this product will eventually replace all of the legacy IMFP product line. And over here on the right, you'll see all the different screenshots from our different manufacturer support, um, which doesn't really do anything for brand cohesiveness for us at all. Um, and uh, we'll be pretty much end of life um, sometime between the, the middle to second half of 2021. So introducing on an MFP near you, Sentry 50. Um, this is the first screen. Um, it is the secure print login. And um, uh, this is consistent against uh, across all of the, the manufacturers that we support. So um, immediately you can tap your badge to sign in. If you've enabled keyboard login, then credential login shows up in the bottom as a button. And then if you have functions like um, tech support or um, uh, people that come in to maintain and manage your devices and fix them when they're broken. Um, we also have a more device functions button that shows up at the bottom that allows you to bypass login and give you only access to applications that are not managed or for um, device management functions. Once you've logged in, uh, the first thing that you'll see is the uh, home screen for Sentry Print. Um, we call it the uh, Secure Print app. Um, the big button in the middle is the Print All button. Um, one of the feedback items that we got from uh, customers was that in general, the first thing they do when they go to the device is print their waiting print jobs. So we made that a focal point. Um, we made it so that it's not hassle, you know, it doesn't require a whole lot of effort. You can just click it and go. Um, if you need to, you can click the review documents button on the left. That will take you to your job list itself. And then we have the more device functions again. But at this point, because you've already authenticated through the lock screen, um, pressing more device functions at this point will unlock all of the applications that are um, enabled on the device so that they can do copy and scan and fax and print from USB and everything else that you might want them to be able to do. If you present a card and you have not registered that card previously or we don't recognize it in our database, then we get the secure print login screen. Um, it's very similar to what we do currently in IMFP. You can put in your email. This is showing from Beacon, which supports email and PIN. Um, Blueprint supports email and PIN as well. It also supports email and uh, password, or sorry, login ID and password if uh, you're using Active Directory or LDAP implementation. And the same will hold through for uh, uh, Uniprint as well. Once you put in your credentials, you hit the register button, and then the system aligns all that in the back end and 
you're presented with the uh, secure print home screen. If you do press the review my job list button, this is what you get. Um, it's basically a rundown of everything that you've got already. Um, a um, uh, summary of your job will show up below. So I'll tell you how many pages, who submitted it. Um, if you're using delegate printing and blueprint, then it will include the owner's information there and what time that was generated. As you go through and you select documents, your total page count will tick up as well as your documents selected. And then you can print. Um, if you're a Beacon customer and you have a job selected in this screen, you can also click the print options button and the print options button will take you to a screen where you can manage um, how many copies you want, whether you want it second two-sided or single-sided, if you want it color versus black and white. And at that point then, once you've made those changes, you can print and then in Beacon, we also offer a print retain function, which allows you to store the job still on the server and print it later if you need to until the job expiry expires. Uh, for manufacturer support, we currently offer support for HP, Konica, Rico, and coming soon, um, near the end of October, will be Xerox for Beacon and for Blueprint. And uh, we currently have Canon in certification and Lexmark in certification. And uh, Toshiba is a new product that we are going to be developing for starting in October and releasing most likely around spring of 2021. Um, and that will then round out our existing IMFP product line and uh, we'll be focusing on other manufacturers as uh, the need requires after that point. Um, uh, deploying Sentry SE50 is an absolute dream. Um, basically, uh, you use a web browser to go ahead and access either Print Center, if you're in Blueprint or Uniprint, or the Beacon Console. Um, that means that you can access it basically from anywhere you are, and you can access it from anything that has web connectivity. Um, I would re not recommend that you use a smartphone. Um, something like an iPad or an Android tablet would be my first choice. Um, if I was mobile, and then you've got, of course, your laptops and desktop machines. Um, it's a single point of administration so that you can configure, deploy, and remove device security. Um, and as a side note here, there are some manufacturers that do require some device preparation before you actually deploy. Um, and where that occurs, that is present within um, the Century SE50 deployment guide as an appendix for each manufacturer so that you can make those changes before you deploy. Um, because it's web-based and because we can, uh, we're allowing um, multiple devices to be deployed at a time. So you can go ahead and choose 20 in the list and say secure, and then those 20 will be secured. Um, it's a similar experience between Blueprint and Beacon because it is a web page. We basically just duplicated the interfaces for both. And the cool thing about the Sentry SE50 implementation is that you can, um, put us between uh, a load balancing solution like F5 Network's Big IP or Radware or something like that, where it's a stateful load balancer. And uh, that way you can deploy your fleet and have um, a general sense of high availability and somewhat uh, some level of redundancy. Um, this is Blueprint's Print Center interface for securing a device. Uh, you basically click the secure tab if you're logged in with an account that can. And all of your devices show up in the list. If you have a device that is configured for a legacy IMFP terminal, um, you'll see the server name in the uh, list. But you'll notice that it says unsecured because it is not secured from a Sentry perspective. If you did want to make that MPC 401 uh, Sentry interface instead, you'd first have to uh, uninstall Rico IMFP and then go in here and secure it. It will not remove the legacy software instead or as a part of that process. 
And of course, you'll see that we have filters available within the column headers. So if you have a specific manufacturer or model type that you want to deploy or a range of IP addresses, you can start from there. <laughs> Excuse me. And this is the beacon interface. So there's not a whole lot of difference. Um, there's a couple more columns, but it's not really a, a big game changer. And uh, once you get done, you basically go ahead and you uh, select your device and click your secure pr printer button. And after you click the secure printer button, it takes you to a pop-up screen where you can choose the release types for that printer. Um, in Beacon, we have a mobile QR code function. Um, in Blueprint and Uniprint, we will be having QR codes in about a couple weeks or so, um, but it will not be part of the release type here. We offer a different mechanism to manage that within those on-site platforms, um, but you can choose proximity card or keyboard login. You just click the tile on the left, and then you can click the um, arrow that faces to the right. It pops it over into the enabled release types box, and then you click secure. And that's all there is to it. Um, within Blueprint, there is an option in the bottom of this panel to set the um, administrative login ID and password for those devices. And in Beacon, that's handled as another button press within the main console. Um, so you can edit there. And then once you've clicked the secure button, it basically just goes on and takes care of it. And um, uh, we're going to have a live demonstration for that shortly. Um, but before that, um, we've got another poll question. All right. I'm going to launch it right away so everyone can begin putting their answers in. So what will motivate you to move to Century SE50? Simpler deployment? More intuitive user interface? Consistent user experience across devices? Or I'm not sure I need to consider this a little bit more. Can see the votes coming in. Thank you to everybody who's participating in these. This is great feedback. Give you five more seconds. Okay, I'm going to close the poll. And Scott, I can I can share these yeah, um, that's results good. out if you'd like. Okay, yeah, that'd be cool. There. Everyone can see them now. All right. So it looks like the winner of this is a consistent user experience across the devices, which I agree is a, is a major benefit. Um, it's one of the things that we were reaching for. Um, we had our challenges with some of the OEMs when we're doing this because they all do things a little bit differently within their devices. Um, but uh, uh, we overcome each one of those. You know, we had great partnership with our uh, manufacturing partners uh, with uh, Century Print this time made it a lot easier. Okay. All right, so before we go into q and I'd like to take some time to uh, uh, show you how this all works in practice. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in uh, my browser screen and uh, I've expanded it and made it larger for some people because uh, I am site challenged, so um, kind of sometimes hard to screen the screen. So at this point, what I've got is um, I filtered my list so that I just had the one device that I was told I could play with for my webinar today. So um, basically you go in and you click the box next to it. It will then pop up with a secure printers button because before it was deactivated. If you try to choose something that we don't support currently and you click its little box, it'll stay deactivated um, so that you don't accidentally try to push something to a device that uh, won't work. Uh, click the secure printers button. And this is blueprint. So we have proximity card and keyboard login. So I'll select them both and then pop them over to the right panel. I'm going to choose what server I want them to initially be managed from. In this case, I'm going to pick my Blueprint Analyst. And um, I've already defined my uh, uh, admin credentials. So my item says update rather than set here. 
And uh, once I've got all that configured, I go ahead and click the secure button. And it immediately starts by processing. So at this point, it's going through and it's um, uh, putting a small authentication piece uh, that includes the URL to talk back to my server. Um, on the device, it's um, go ahead, going ahead and locking my applications, like copy and scan and whatnot on the device that I've already pre-authenticated for. Um, and uh, it's putting in some certificates so that it can talk back via HTTPS. Um, that's one point to consider here. Uh, when you are engaging Century SE50, uh, everything uses an HTTPS circuit so that uh, all the data that flows back and forth is encrypted and uh, away from prying eyes. So that makes your user password workflows a lot more secure. And uh, it's secure. And people say, really? I'm like, yep. So if I go over here, I can enable super panel so I can see my remote interface. And even though I am comfortably stationed in Largo, Florida, uh, the printer is uh, sleeping quite nicely in the uh, office right now. So let me go ahead and wake it up. And there's our secure print login screen. So I obviously cannot badge in since I am 1,700 miles away. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the username and password login. Oh, I spelled it wrong. That will not work very well. And we go here. The pressure's on, Scott. The pressure is on <laughs> to type my password before my <laughs> session times out on this wonderful little thing. Yeah. Come on. This worked earlier without having to use the soft keyboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move this off to a screen that uh, you can't see my password and then I'll bring it back over. And just a couple more seconds. That's always the fun part with secure password requirements. It takes forever to do this remotely. And there we go. So now we see that we have two documents. I go in here to review documents. It's going to show me my two. I'll print the one that is not 21 pages. And uh, click the print button. And then it retrieves it from the server. And then it will take me back to my job list once that component is done. or tell me not to, oh, there we go. So then we're done. Um, if I want to, I can go back and I finished printing out and now I need to go ahead and do some copying. So I'll just go to more device functions, which then takes me back on my HP to my user home screen, where we have copy, scan, print facts and whatever. If I need to, I've, once I'm done here, 
if I need to, I can go, go ahead and click on Secure Print, and that'll take me back into our interface. And all right, it shows me my one document. And uh, at that point, I can sign out. So let me go ahead and do that. It takes me back to that screen, so I can close out of there. Actually, yeah, I'll just do this. And then um, let's say that that device no longer needs to be secured because it is being replaced with somebody else. I can go ahead and I can click in here, and I get Secure Printer again. Choose my tiles, move them back to the left side of the screen, and then what you'll see my button turns into unsecure. Now let me do one thing here real quick. Um, in Blueprint and eventually in Uniprint, if you choose a different server, let's say that I need to move it for, to a different server because um, I'm going to have a, a software upgrade event on that server and I don't want it to be um, unavailable for my users, all I need to do is choose a new one from the list and then I click the re-register button. Re-register allows me to basically just make a URL change on the device without having to go through the whole deployment process again. Um, which takes just a matter of seconds, and then I'm on my way. But instead, I actually want to unsecure. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And again, it basically just goes through and undoes everything that we pushed to it in the first place. And uh, when it's done, which usually takes faster than the 14 or 15 or whatever percent does. It will go back into an unsecured state and my server name will be blank and uh, everything else is the same. The one thing that it does retain after I've unsecured a printer is that admin credential. So if I just needed to unsecure it for some other reason and then needed it back in, I could just go back in here and hit the secure printer button put in my um, authorization mechanisms and then click the secure button. I wouldn't need to worry about um, changing the uh, admin ID and password anymore. All right, so we have questions. I'm going to uh, take a look at the questions that were uh, submitted earlier. Where did those questions go? They disappeared. That's awesome. Oh, here we go. They just pop back into their hole again. All right, so we have uh, I need to change my window size here. All right, so the first question that I have is why does that other doesn't work? Um, While you figure your window out, I can ask you a couple if sure. you'd like. Okay. Yep, go ahead. Um, so one of the questions is, when will this be available for Uniprint? Um, Uniprint will come with Century SE50 for all supported manufacturers with Uniprint 9.2, um, which is um, going to show up um, either first quarter or second quarter of 2021. Uh, it depends on uh, what else needs to happen and how long the quality assurance takes. Um, but we'll be um, in a position to provide them everything we need on the embedded product side um, well in advance of the uh, 9.2 release. So, but it will come out with, with 9.2. Okay. Uh, Another question is, does the screen scale on smaller four-line screens? Um, smaller four-line screens, if this is for an HP question, um, there are only specific HP force or the smaller models that do support that, um, and they already support Future Smart 4, um, but yes, they do scale. Um, so independent of screen size. So we have large screen support, which is the eight inch on the HP. Uh, we have a four inch screen support, and then um, the smaller ones, the two inch, are also available. Okay, 
Uh, so we've got, oh, I've got a question here. Um, uh, how does this align with zero touch printing? So that's a good question. Um, one of the functions that is going to be available um, soon for Blueprint immediately when Uniprint ships and uh, currently with Beacon is a zero touch print. So once you're in your interface um, and you've presented your card, there is a an intermediate screen that shows up that says that your print jobs will be re released in like three or five or 10 seconds, whatever you program that for. And then at the end of that interval, once that time's expired, all of the users print jobs in, in ready will be sent to the device and print out all at once. Um, there is a cancel button that shows up in that window. So if you don't want to just use it for print release and you need to make like a copy, for example, you can click the cancel button at that point and then it takes you to the home screen. So um, we're, we're assuming at that point that since you need to make like a copy, which requ requires heavy OCP interaction, uh, that hitting a cancel button is not such a big deal. Um, and uh, uh, have, have workflowed that that way. And that is a function that you need to enable in your console, so it's not on by default. Um, so we have a lot of Uniprint related questions here. I'm gonna try my best to work around those. We haven't been through the entire design process yet, so it's still kind of up in the air. Um, but uh, uh, can the initial screen be defaulted to authentication rather than tap? Um, the verbiage on the screens is pretty fixed. Um, so um, when we were going through that, we realized that there are about 35 million different ways to say swipe or touch or print or whatever you want to do with your badge to make it happen at the device. Um, and in focus groups, the consistent one that came back was tap. Um, because swipe doesn't work well with, when you're using a proximity card and all sorts of different stuff. So it's hard to really accommodate the different ways that that can happen. Um, there will be um, a customizable interface pretty much like we have right now with Print Center for Uniprint and Blueprint that will allow changes to be made to text and images and even color schemes within the SE50 interface. And uh, when that happens, that is one of those items that is um, customizable. Um, alongside that, for international support, if the device has the ability to be put into a different language, for example, Italian or Polish or French or German or something like that, um, we have translation scripts inside the software because it's web-based that convert all of those strings into that language as well um, so that your native speakers can see um, can, can see it in their, their native language rather than having it in English. However, for those modifiable strings that are going to be present when we start doing the customizable feature, once you've put it in, whatever that language happens to be, we're going to assume that it's English, but it doesn't have to be, um, there will be no translation available. It will be present in that language, and that happens site-wide rather than per server because that all tracks back to the same database. So um, that's one of the one of the, the takes from the, the ability to modify those, those, those strings. Um, how does third-party charging come into play? Um, so that's a uniprint function. Um, it will be pretty much the same way that it's going to be handled with the upcoming print client. So once you have your um, authentication piece done, if you have the ability to assign it a uh, billing code or a grant code, then that will be presented at that time. If you have only a small group, then we're going to um, plan is right now to present those on the screen so you can just tap the one that you want to and go. If you have multiples um, beyond three, then there will be a search box so you can search for your code and then move it from there. Um, that's the, uh, the anticipated design for that. Um, can the unrecognized login be made into a message rather than a login opportunity? Um, there is um, a way within the print center 
to configure it so that it can't do card registration. So that's an on off thing. So if it's if card registration is disabled, then instead of getting a give me your name and password and I'll align it for you, it comes up and says that your card is not registered and to contact your administrator so that you, they can be entered in that way. Um, um, and yeah, so there's a, a Uniprint mobile print and off the glass. So there's gonna be a lot of, um, for the most part, the user interface and the user interaction and workflow is going to be very similar between the legacy IMFP solutions and Sentry, um, where we've had, where we've introduced the the, the change over. Uh, the user community has been fairly comfortable right now, but um, those are within Blueprint environments. So there's not a whole lot of extra interaction anyway, besides authentication, picking my stuff to print and going. Um, Uniprint, there's a, sometimes a little bit more, and that's mostly in regards to um, uh, third-party billing, um, assignments and that kind of thing, um, but it's just going to be a screen, just like a web page. Um, so there shouldn't be a whole lot of extra things to to, to wrangle with that one. Uh, I've covered the four line thing. Um, um, so it says in Beacon you showed options of mobile prox card and keyboard. Do you also support MagSwipe? Uh, MagSwipe is really just the same. It's it's uh, again. Within the, the the corporate environments, there's not a whole lot of mag card usage. It's usually a, a, an HID or a prox card um, that's you know using a wireless function to get to, um, but it does support mag stripe um, out of the box. Um, so uh, that that also works. That may require some UI changing based on the platform, um, but it's not going to be a whole lot. Um, Let's see, what else do you have? Do you have Scott, there's one yeah. here that says, can the secure print login screen be customized with the customer logos, banner, et cetera? Oh, I see that, yep. And um, not right now, but that will be a in an upcoming release. We don't know exactly when that's gonna be. Uh, we have to build out the UI just like we did in Print Center for customization of that interface, and then figure out how to bolt all that back in so that those calls to those CSS objects can be um, uh, database based rather than buried in the code as they are right now. Um, is there anything similar in the works to support single function devices? Um, single function devices um, are a challenge um, within Sentry SE50. Uh, that is why we continue to maintain the SR25, which is that little hardware terminal. It's a box about the size of um, like a Walkman, <laughs> if anybody remembers what a Walkman size was, um, that plugs one end into the printer, one end into the wall, and then accepts a card um, so that you can basically just swipe and go. And of course, like I said earlier, the SR25 works for um, Blueprint, Uniprint, and Beacon. Um, there's a question, do we need to still set up the terminal in Blueprint Admin first? And that answer is no. Um, the SE50 in all of its platforms uh, auto creates terminal on deployment. So there's no need to do that, just like the SR25 does. So that, that requirement is gone. Um, is there... Is there a license cost to go from HP IMFP to SE50? Um, that you'll have to contact your sales rep about um, because I am outside of that part of the business. Um, I just make sure that it all works and gets, gets everybody what they need and then it's a sales job to, to manage the rest of that thing. Um, and yes, for HP, it's only for future smart floor printers. Um, for HP, um, supported devices, it's a really easy checklist. Does it support Future Smart 4? And uh, does it have a screen? And if it has a screen that you can touch, it's a candidate for uh, SE50. Um, we have a full list of the supported devices out at ferros.com. Um, I believe the path is, let's see, let me make sure that I'm not telling any lies. Um, ferros.com. 
I'll put that over here. Uh, so underneath solutions, you just need to go to supported printers and MFDs. Uh, let me accept my cookies. There we go. And then you just click on your manufacturer. So I'm going to click on HP, for example, here. And within there, we now have a three column format that shows us the model and whether it's supported by IMFP or by Century Print. And if it's, if it's Century Print, that's right now for both Beacon and Blueprint. And then when it's available for Uniprint, well, that will also apply to that product as well. So for instance, the uh, CM4540, no, but it is for the M575 and so forth. And um, one comment to make about these lists, um, manufacturers like to put different sub model names based on device feature set and whatnot. Um, so if you see, for example, like a color laser jet M575, if you see, if you're buying a color laser jet MFP M575 or a color laser jet enterprise M575 or a managed color laser jet M575, in our eyes, those are the same device. So all of those little iterations for product names are completely fine. Um, the same thing happens to for other manufacturers where they'll put like a DE or a DN or a DX or something like that at the uh, end of the product name. It's the same. As long as the model, the, the base model name is there and similar, the other bits they hang around it, it's completely supported as well. Um, other questions? Um, is there a license? You got that a couple times. Uh, single function support again is SR25. Um, customization, it looks like I've covered all of them. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, cool. You did good, Scott. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Um, so, if there aren't any other questions, yeah, I, um, I, I did. Thank you all for your time. Yeah, and I, I did want to mention for anyone asking questions about pricing or licensing, um, one of the things we will be emailing everyone with a link to the recording. Um, so certainly you can reply back to that or reach out to your Faro's account manager or sales rep with these questions. Um, we're definitely happy to help. So I just want to thank everyone for joining us today and to Scott for introducing us to Century SE50 and the consistent UI across all devices, as well as all the other many benefits that we can all look forward to. As I mentioned, we'll be following up with everyone with a link. If you have questions, definitely reach out. You can also find a complete list of upcoming events, as well as recordings to past ones on the Pharos website at pharos.com forward slash events. And one thing I did want to mention, um, the follow-up email that you'll be receiving, you will see from our inside sales reps. It will be either from Catherine or a new colleague who has joined us named Dawn. So you want to keep your eye out for, for those two names um, for the link to, to this. So um, we hope to see you at future events. Stay healthy, safe. Thank you to all and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.